Hi everybody, my name is Alexander and today I'm going to talk about uh, a little bit about uh, contract testing and how to do it with Spring Cloud contract. So first of all, as uh, some speakers have already mentioned today, uh, we have uh, in, in some um, studios or in some um, applications, we have um, uh, movement from monolithic architecture um, where we have a single, big single um, monolithic code base on the back end and uh, one or more um, like um, APIs uh, that are used either from web site or from uh, various mobile sites. Uh, so instead of this uh, big, uh, huge thing on the back end, some of the applications move to microservices. Uh, what it means is uh, instead of one big thing, we have a lot, a lot of uh, microservices, like uh, tiny little pieces of software that do only one basic thing, like uh, computing some uh, things or storing or retrieving some uh, necessary data from database. And then the other thing, all of these services are communicating with each other. Uh, basically the communication is uh, either using HTTP calls like um, get, post or whatever, uh, also, it can be uh, communicating through messaging systems or to some other uh, protocols like protocol buffers. So um, instead of uh, just um, looking on what we have on the backend, uh, let's say on the big challenge that uh, emerges when we start uh, doing um, microservices development and testing. Uh, imagine that we have on the backend side, we have a two services, two little piece of code uh, one called is user service and the second is bonus service. And we have a simple thing to test and to implement from the development side and from testing side. Uh, we need to, to, uh, to make a call from user service uh, on the get um, and uh, passing some parameters like user ID and session ID and get the, the value for uh, bonus values for the particular user. So it's like the simplest possible call from one service to another. So how we can uh, test it, uh, no matter uh, who will be uh, implement this test, the test engineer or the developer, uh, we need to test it and verify it. So the first thing that we can do, of course, and we must do is unit testing. Um, so in unit testing, uh, instead of making a call to real uh, implementation of the bonus service, we make a call to the mock. So the mock is like a, um, I think when we uh, instantiate of the instance of the bonus service in our uh, code on the user side, on user service side, and we define all of the returned values. So uh, we define the, how the bonus service should behave. Uh, that's why we say, uh, implement in the code. So when uh, the um, bonus client will get, uh, someone will um, make a call to get user bonus balance method, we need to return some value. And then we assert this value uh, that this value is equal to expected. So the main idea here is that uh, the unit tests are really uh, simple to implement and they are really fast. They're fast because uh, they are um, uh, now uh, on the, they are executed on the local side, on the developer machine. That's why we can have a thousand unit tests that are run in a matter of like uh, minutes. So the, the main disadvantage, he, disadvantage here is when we um, uh, working with only with unit tests and we deploy the service to some kind of environment uh, when the real implementation of the user and the bonus service are, are uh, and make a real call, we, uh, uh, we can reveal that the problem is that the bonus service actually works not as expected that we on the user service side expect. That's why we have an alternative that uh, other solution that should be implemented also uh, is to implement API tests. It, it's like the simplest possible API tests that we can have. So um, we deploy both services uh, to environment uh, and make a real call to the bonus service, uh, get the real implementation, uh, like real answer and response from the bonus service and uh, verify that the response is equal to expected. So the main thing is uh, here is that bonus service right now has a real implementation. It's not an assumptions, it's a real thing. Uh, but the disadvantage is that we 
uh, need to spend time on to deploying one service to environment, second service and environment. And in some cases, we need to deploy other, other connect services to environment in order to check one simple API call. So it takes time. Um, so um, we have um, like two choices, whether we have a really fast uh, test on the unit level or a really uh, slow test on the API level, but API level provides more value because we're using real implementation. So basically we have something in the middle uh, and we can do something in the middle, it's called contract testing. So instead of uh, actually uh, writing any mocks or any assumptions of how other services are working, we are uh, implementing the contract. Uh, I will show you the example of the contract in the following slides. So basically it's um, agreement between uh, two services, how uh, the user service will use the bonus service and how the bonus service should respond in terms of data, in terms of headers and other parameters. And um, uh, if you are talking about uh, contract testing concepts, we have a uh, two sites. So the site which perform a request, it's called a consumer and the site which responds with some data, it's a producer. So the main idea that we are uh, in contract testing that we are implementing the contract and we are implementing consumers test on the consumer side and the producer test on the producer side. And the big thing here is that uh, when we implement all of the things, uh, we uh, get the tests that worked with the almost real implementation of the services, how they are uh, supposed to, to work. But all of these tests are uh, actually uh, runs really, really fast almost the same uh, speed as for unit tests. So, <coughs> sorry. So in uh, contract testing, we have a uh, two uh, ways how to do uh, contract testing. The first way is producer driven when the producer service defines all of the contracts. So how it should behave and all of the consumers actually should implement this API. But the alternative thing is consumer contract testing. Uh, consumer driven testing, it's when the each consumer which comes to the producer define its own contract. And the main uh, advantage, advantage here is for uh, even the same um, endpoint, like in this example, for user balance endpoint, each of the consumer implement their expectation. So in case, for example, we will, uh, the bonus service will change the bonus type to call like type so the com um, communication will be broken only with user service. <coughs> Sorry. So, uh, and communication with other service will not be broken. In Java, we have a two different uh, tool sets or tools <coughs> that are work with uh, contract testing. It's Spring Cloud Contract and Pact. Today, I will show you the examples on this using Spring Cloud contract. So basically, uh, when we are talking about how we can define the contracts, it's basically <coughs> can be implemented uh, using the Groovy uh, or YAML or Kotlin DSL. And uh, here is an example how the contract is looks like. Uh, we define the request section. So in this contract, the bonus, uh, the user service will call uh, the bonus conference service and uh, user balance endpoint uh, and use the method get uh, with some query parameters like we uh, already uh, said that it, it will be user ID and session ID. And in response, uh, user service uh, will expect that the status code of the response will be 200 and there will be some array of bonuses for a given user. So this is a contract. Uh, so how consumer test works uh, underneath, so after we will get the contract. So based on the contract, the Spring Cloud contract tool will generate the stop, wire mock stop, uh, th that can be used uh, when we implement the test. So we will call um, almost a real implementation of the service of this communication. So how the test will look like. <coughs> on the consumer side, we will define um, where we um, actually uh, have the contracts and for each consumer we need to uh, get the stop. And then 
the test will be the the simplest possible test API test that we can have. So we perform a um, get request, get the response, and assert the response. So we are asserting that we get the bonus array, like list of bonuses. Uh, and uh, for first bonus, we get the bonus ID and we get the bonus type. So this is like the first thing. The, on the producer side, the things are a little bit different. So based on the contract, the Spring Cloud contract uh, tool will generate the test itself. The test will be uh, generated using uh, the REST assured library. And then the test will be automatically um, executed uh, against the latest implementation of the bonus service API. So how it looks like? Actually, here is the automatically generated test on the uh, producer side. So as you can see, this uh, the, the test actually is the same as we defined the contract. So we even have the, all of the um, uh, assertions that we defined, that we are asserting the status code, the content type, and the, um, actually the content of the body of the response. All, the only thing that we need to uh, do on the producer side is uh, we need to define like the uh, mocked uh, answers for, the, for these API calls that will be performed uh, by these generated tests. So as you can see, we are defining them a little bit of mock um, when we define that when the, someone will um, make a um, call to get user bonus balance method with this defined user ID and session ID, we need to provide the um, bonus and the bonus should be the same according to the contract that we defined. So basically we can do uh, this implementation not only for REST communication, also we can define the contracts uh, for messaging. For example, when some service um, publish some message to some uh, topic, uh, it can be any messaging system. For example, it can be Apache Kafka. Uh, uh, the only thing that we need to define is the, the uh, actually to which topic uh, the message will be sent and the actually the content of the uh, message itself. And then we will uh, check it uh, on the side that is publishing message to the topic and also on the side that is consumed this message from the topic. So uh, the first thing that, uh, and the first question that we can ask here is, hey, we can discard any other tests for microservices and substitute it with the contracts. Actually, it is no. Uh, as, um, as we already know, we have a like, um, concept of uh, automation uh, pyramid. Uh, when we have a, a lot of different types of tests, it needs to be done uh, when we have a full coverage. Uh, so the contract test, it's only is, uh, actually a one one of the types of tests that needs to be implemented. And actually the contracts are uh, testing integration between the services. And uh, no, it's not only like the integration itself, it's uh, the format of the integration. Uh, the, um, and the biggest thing that contracts will provide to you is that no one, if we, you establish the contract testing through all of your services, uh, uh, so no, uh, any, any service uh, can do uh, actually change without breaking something and without, and it, it actually, the, the team that is making a breaking change, it, it is blocked from making this breaking change unless uh, any other like consumers uh, will uh, implement uh, the change that needed for this breaking change. So it actually um, complements the component tests and it's almost like an end-to-end -end test. So. Uh, in, in our particular uh, scenario, we have right now on the backend side, almost like a 250 services, which communicates with each other. And by implementing contract tests and also the components and unit tests, we are able to decrease amount of end-to-end -end API tests. So right now we are um, on the end-to-end -end level, we are checking only like the, the main flows and the other things are actually checked uh, on the lower level. So basically um, what I have to say uh, in the end, the, the first thing that contract testing, if it's actually implemented, uh, can bring the value. 
uh, but uh, it involves so the, the changes that needed to implement the contract testing in any organization. It is actually uh, really hard because uh, other uh, some from one thing you need to uh, to do actually uh, the technical things so the technical implementation of this uh, contract test. But from other uh, side you need to uh, change the mindset of the developers and the testers uh, in order that hey, right now from this point, you will not able to make a breaking change without letting know everybody that is used to your service. So right, so this is like the biggest, biggest challenge. And if organization have the problems with communication between the teams, the contract tests will, will be really hard to implement or impossible to implement. And the last thing uh, is that contract testing, it's completely not a silver bullet. If you don't have end-to-end -end UI tests, end-to-end -end API tests, or even if you don't have unit tests for now. So please start with lower level tests like unit tests and uh, component tests. And only after that, proceed to the contract tests. So um, these resources, uh, when you can start uh, by looking to the Spring Cloud contracts, I actually share the, all of these resources uh, in my Twitter account, and I will share it in the uh, actually in the channel, in the Slack channel as well. So um, this is it. Thank you for your attention. And uh, if you want to talk about the contract testing, actually any kind of automation, please reach me uh, in uh, Twitter. I'm really uh, love to talk about testing. Thank you.